Welcome, Secretary Pompeo, Mike. Let me start by welcoming you to, to Denmark. High-level visits to these days are rare due to the global COVID-19 pandemic. Your decision to prioritize to uh, come to official visit here to Denmark underscores the strong bonds we have between our two countries, between the United States and Denmark. Entirely appreciated, as you know, Mike. Denmark and the United States are the closest allies in NATO, but we are also close, more broadly speaking. We insist on being rule makers, not rule takers in the world of today. Today we have covered areas where we fully agree. We also discussed issues where we come from different perspectives. This is exactly the kind of constructive, frank dialogue only closest allies can have. The US and Denmark are bearers of the same principal values, democracy, freedom, human rights. They are the bedrock of our open and free societies. On the Arctic, let me start by underlying that I invited my close colleagues from Greenland and Faroe Islands to the first meeting with Secretary Pompeo. We uh, only discussed the Arctic together and coordinated with uh, Greenland and Faroes. That goes for all aspects of the Arctic, including security policy. At today's second meeting, Secretary Pompeo and I covered all other bilateral uh, topics of interest. As two of only five Arctic coastal states, the Arctic is a key interest to the Kingdom of Denmark and the United States. Today we reaffirmed our commitment uh, to cooperate and coordinate globally in the Arctic in full respect of the unique constitutional construction of the Kingdom. I'm glad to see the US commitments to increase economic engagement being implemented with the reopening of the US consulate, the new and uh, also project funds. We are keenly aware of the increased global attention and military presence in the Arctic by Russia. We will continue to maintain and build situational awareness in the Arctic. We will ensure that we have the proper capabilities in the region. And we want to maintain close cooperation based on Arctic Council and the USAT Declaration. Working together, the Kingdom of Denmark and US will continue to be a force for international law a voice for cooperation and a driver of economic development in the region. In our talks, also highlighted the Danish commitments to ensure sustainable development with a special focus on our shared global challenge, climate change. Our partnership, of course, goes further than the Arctic and the High North. Uh, in our following meeting, we cover the full range of US-Danish bilateral issues. The US is one of Denmark's biggest trading partners we aim to expand cooperation even further based on free and fair trade. Denmark and the US have a lot to offer each other. Denmark knows that the thing we hold dearest, our values and principles, our way of life, our safety and security cannot be taken for granted. That is why Denmark will continue to be a high activity and high impact NATO ally. With troops on the ground, planes in the air and ships at sea, we will continue to be a force possibility worldwide. This also show our common fight against terrorism, Islamic State, Al-Qaeda, others still work, plot and plan. Denmark and the US remain fully committed to destroy ISIS, and Denmark look forward to taking over leadership of the NATO mission in Iraq later this year. We also discussed China and Hong Kong. The EU has characterized China as a necessary negotiating partner on issues such as climate, but also an economic competitor and a systemic rival. Following last week's Foreign Affairs Council, an EU option paper, paper regarding Hong Kong is now being drafted, a decision Denmark fully supports. Both the EU27 and I have publicly and repeatedly stated our deep concern. It is clear that Europe need a common act coordinated and a strong position on China. Denmark and US are natural and long-time allies, friends and partners. The world stands at a decision point. We choose to be rule makers, not rule takers. Open and free societies must stand up for our shared values, reject authoritarianism wherever it surfaces, defend our democracies from hybrid threats for terrorism. So Mr. Secretary Mike, Thank you once again 
for your visit. Please take the floor and afterwards, I believe we will have time for a couple of questions. Mike, please. Thank you. Thank you for Mr. COVID. I want to thank you and your team for putting this together. It is always uh, a lot of work to when I, uh, a foreign minister comes to visit in, in these challenging times, it's even more difficult. You all did a fantastic job and I appreciate all the work that you and your team did. Uh, Denmark is indeed such a strong and noble partner of the United States. And my conversations today with you and with Prime Minister Fredrickson reaffirmed that truth. I want to congratulate her. This is her one week anniversary. Uh, and so it was very kind of her on day seven of her marriage to spend a little bit of time with me. Very generous. Uh, congratulations to, to her and her family. Uh, look, these two nations are both robust democracies. We each understand that there's a cost connected to the freedom that we so love and that we have an obligation to together vigorously defend it. For years, uh, Denmark has made mighty contributions and real sacrifices in support of NATO missions in Afghanistan and Iraq, uh, as well as in the fight to beat uh, and defeat ISIS. Uh, you all take the commitment to transatlantic security intensely seriously, and we are deeply appreciative of that. Uh, look, we also had a good discussion about the challenges posed to us by authoritarian regimes. Uh, I talked about the Chinese Communist Party's threat to freedom everywhere, to the people of Denmark included. Uh, we trust that Denmark will protect itself from this challenge. I am heartened to see that Denmark and the Danish people join uh, the American people in supporting the Hong Kong people in the face of great Beijing's repression. We also appreciate Denmark's firm steps to diversify the sources and means by which it meets its energy needs, another important aspect of national security. Foreign Minister spoke to this a bit. Uh, Dem Denmark's democratic cooperation on Arctic issues is laudable. Last year, at a meeting of the Arctic Council in Finland, I asked free nations to work with the United States to enshrine shared values like freedom, transparency, sovereignty, and sustainability in the Arctic region. This mission is all the more urgent as we face new competition in the region from countries that don't always play by those rules, if at all. Now, we know. Nowhere do we have a nation that will help us like Denmark. Nowhere have we better upheld our shared values than with the Kingdom of Denmark and the great work we've been able to do on Greenland. Quite simply, it's a new day for the United States and Greenland. Reopening the U.S. consulate in Nook reinvigorates an American presence that was dormant for far too long. The United States has also signed new memorandums of understanding to cooperate with our partners in the Kingdom of Denmark. They cover a wide range of areas, like growing Greenland's mining and energy sectors through transparent investment, helping manage land and fisheries, increasing tourism, and much, much more. And we'll keep working to ensure that our Greenlandic neighbors benefit fully from the presence of Tool Air Force Base, an issue that matters an awful lot to all of us. So true too was our cooperation with the Kingdom of Denmark Kevin in the meeting today. Three foreign ministers and me, three on one. Uh, Minister uh, Lunga of Greenland and, and Minister of Rana of Faroe Islands. We had a great, lively conversation on an important set of issues that matter to each, each of us. Pleased to announce today that the United States and the Faroe Islands have agreed to start a formal dialogue to talk about key issues like healthy fisheries and enhanced commercial engagement. I've talked a lot about democracy just now because before this visit, I learned of the largest American Independence Day gathering in the world outside of the United States. It happens right here in Rainbow National Park in Denmark every year, maybe except this year. Uh, the size of that gathering, thousands annually, says something. Whether it's Americans living abroad or Danes getting in on the fun, our two countries love freedom. And while we rightly celebrate those bonds, uh, We'll work closely together, and Lord willing, our two countries will always strive to uphold them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike.